Are you doomed because of adhesions? Are you doomed to have SIBO forever? Stay tuned to find out if you dare. <laughs> All right, spooky Halloween intro aside, I wanted to talk about this topic because honestly, it's a big, scary, hairy thing in the SIBO space. So for those of you who don't know, adhesions or like scar tissue, you can kind of use those words interchangeably. Uh, adhesions can be a root cause for SIBO. And the reason is because it can restrict motility. So if you imagine when we talk about motility, we're talking about moving the contents of your gut down and out, squeezing the poop tube and moving it to the exit. But that squeezing, that movement is movement and contraction of muscles. And it's very similar to contracting a muscle like the biceps. You have a neurological signal that tells the muscle to contract. The muscle moves and contracts, and that produces the movement, which we would in this case label motility. Well, the thing is, you could have the strongest muscle in the whole wide world. You could have all the vitamins and minerals and all of the nutrients needed to contract that muscle. But if I handcuffed my wrist to the floor, and now I got that neurological signal to contract it. You can't tell, but no matter how much you try, that muscle cannot contract because it's unable to move. So that's what can happen with adhesions and scar tissue for some cases where those muscles in your intestines really want to move. They really want to contract. You could have great gut brain axis control, vitamins and minerals out the wazoo, you name it. But if there is a physical, reason that the muscles cannot contract, you don't get the motility. And those of you who have been around this channel for a while have seen my drawings, but if you can't contract the muscles and you can't keep motility moving, you can't keep the contents of your gut moving downstream, down and out, that's where we start to get stagnation. That's where we start to get things like bacterial overgrowth and fungal overgrowth and what we would ultimately label as SIBO. So, that being said, the question of the day is, are you doomed if you have adhesions, right? Cause like, if you have low stomach acid, we have supplements and we have strategies that we know can increase your stomach acid. If you had um, like a stress or a trauma induced IBS, there are herbs and there are things that we can do like meditation and hypnosis and therapy. There are things that we could do to help your body cope with stress what can you do for adhesions, right? Like we can't just go in there with a Roto-Rooter and like break up all the adhesions because we would in the process probably kill you. Um, occasionally you hear about this happening in medicine, right? So somebody has knee surgery, the surgery causes scar tissue, and then later they have to have a second surgery to go in there and break up the scar tissue in the knee in hopes that it will heal more efficiently the second time around. So occasionally you hear about this in medicine, but it's not a super common thing in the GI system because the anatomy in the GI system is much more complicated and much more squishy compared to a knee. So there's, there's this feeling that I've gotten talking to people over the years that if they think they have adhesions and that's a root cause for their SIBO, there's this very distinct feeling I get from people that they're just doomed. They're host. They're gonna have SIBO forever and ever because we cannot go into the intestines with a roto rooter. We can't break up all of that crap and all of the scar tissue. And therefore you're never gonna have good motility and therefore you're always gonna have SIBO and you might as well give up now. I'm here to tell you that I do not think that's the case. Um, and I will add something to this story that I think is important for a lot of you to hear. So first of all, when I'm talking about adhesions and scar tissue, I'm specifically thinking about the abdominal area. So if you had a broken ankle or if you had a knee surgery, or if you had, you know, some sort of superficial surgery or something on the extremities, that is not what I'm talking about here. Um, where we start getting into the maybe territory is stuff like you had your gallbladder removed or you had your appendix removed where we start getting into the, ooh, yeah, this, this is probably more likely to be the case territory is things like if part of your bowel was removed, like if you have ulcerative colitis and you need to have your colon removed, or if you had 
you know, some portion of your small bowel removed, or if you had um, like a gastric bypass surgery or bari bariatric surgery, where they're going in and they're, they're cutting and resizing the stomach and they're bypassing an entire part of the small intestine. That's the sort of stuff where I start thinking, yeah, this is probably higher likelihood that this is gonna impact your physiology and your motility. Then we have the middle of the road. So we have the like, yeah, maybe, but I don't think it's as common as people think, appendix, gallbladder, um, of a root cause that is. We've got the, yeah, probably like removing the colon, removing the small bowel, gastric bypass, bariatric surgery, that sort of stuff. Um, the middle of the road tend to get all of the press for some reason. So that is things like um, endometriosis, which interestingly enough, as a side note, this is not a video about endo. I was researching this recently to put some material in my practitioner training program. I looked on PubMed, I could not find any studies actually linking endometriosis with SIBO, which was very perplexing because everybody talks about this so much. So I do believe that there is a link because of this adhesion kind of issue. Um, I don't think we have the numbers on it though, and I don't know how strong the link is. So as a side note, not as well researched as you would have thought. Um, and then the other one is C-sections and even to some degree pregnancy, because even just carrying a baby moves your organs around quite a lot. Um, I think that the biggest thing, if, if you're wondering, okay, could adhesions be playing a role? Is this a root cause for me as an individual? The thing that I would tell you is that if the event that caused the scar tissue or the adhesions happened, and then within a period of like a month or two, you started developing SIBO symptoms, I would say, yes, there's a pretty good likelihood that that's involved. If, however, you had the, the triggering event, like the surgery or the C-section or you know the pregnancy, whatever it might be, and then you developed IBS or SIBO symptoms years later, I wouldn't lean on the, the um, adhesion thing as heavily. There's always a chance, like, you know, some people have more of a predilection to lay down scar tissue than other people. Um, but I don't think I would be chasing that one as much. And I certainly wouldn't feel doomed because of it. So, and I say this because A, I have seen that happen. I remember years ago, I worked with a woman and to be quite honest, she was pretty negative. Um, it, was, it was a little bit taxing working with her. And, you know, she came in for the first appointment and I just remember this attitude of like, <laughs> you're not going to help me. Um, which is like, why are you even here? Right? Like save yourself the trouble. But she, um, she was annoyed from the get go. And she said, I've been to X amount of other providers. None of them have helped me. And I'm just, I'm doomed to suffer with this constipation for the rest of my life. And, um, I was the first person to finally diagnose her with SIBO. So that was a win. And I remember talking to her about what possibly could have happened. And it turned out that she started developing really gnarly bloating and pooping problems within about a month of having her son who was a C-section baby. So, you know, kind of putting two and two together, the symptoms sounded like SIBO, that root cause could be SIBO-y. Um, and it turned out she did have SIBO. Um, for whatever reason, I didn't see her after that. She got the SIBO diagnosis and then just peaced out and never contacted me again. So I don't know how she's doing now. But I remember that was a pretty clear cut case where it was like, oh, okay, you had the C-section. Within weeks or maybe a month, you started having these symptoms and they have persisted for 30 years ever since. That makes sense. Now, I will say as a side note, um, always look for other confounding variables when you're doing this kind of stuff. Because having had a baby myself, I will tell you the sleep deprivation and the stress of having a baby are like nothing on planet Earth. So sleep and stress could have been involved for her too. But um, I remember sending her home with homework to do some abdominal massage. Uh, I believe I referred her to a visceral manipulation specialist. And like I said, she didn't touch base after that. Um, to contrast that story, I had a woman that I was going back and forth with on Instagram for a while. 
And I remember this topic of adhesions came up and she was one of several who have communicated to me on some level that she just, she felt like she was doomed. She felt like she was hosed, gonna have adhesions for the rest of her life. Therefore, she's gonna have SIBO for the rest of her life. Nothing she could do about it. This sucks, oh man. Um, and she desperately wants to get better, like desperately, but she had lost all hope that she ever would. And she brought up adhesions and I remember in our exchange, she said that the event that caused the adhesions happened, but then she didn't develop IBS and SIBO symptoms until like three or four years later. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know if this message was well received because sometimes um, it can be hard to hear an opinion that doesn't match your own. And it can be very frustrating to think that you've chased after the wrong thing for a while. Uh, but I tried to gently communicate with her that A, I'm not convinced that adhesions are actually a root cause for her. B, if they are, they're not the primary, right? Like if the adhesions were the primary, you would have thought she would have developed these symptoms much sooner, but there was a three or four year gap where she presumably had some scar tissue or some adhesions and she felt great. She felt normal. And then everything kind of went to shit. So that's the biggest takeaway I wanted to share from this video is a, no, you're not doomed. I think there are things we could do, but B, um, think about the timing of it. Don't, don't hang your hat on the adhesion thing. If there's something else in the timeline that makes more sense. Again, I think like there's always th these conversations and nuance to be had where yes, scar tissue could play a role for some people, um, especially the things that I rattled off earlier. But again, if the timing doesn't make sense, I wouldn't go chasing that. And again, I certainly wouldn't like give up all hope. Now, what was happening in her life? three or four years later when she did develop the symptoms, I didn't find out because this was just a casual exchange on Instagram. It wasn't like one of my patients. Um, had she been a patient of mine, if, if this came up in her, our appointment together, I would have asked her many more questions about what was happening in her life in the six months or so prior to developing SIBO symptoms. But for what it's worth, no, you're not doomed. Even if you have adhesions, I think that there's still a lot of hope. Things like visceral manipulation, which I did a little video on this channel, a bit of a DIY, so you could do a bit on your own. You could also go seek the help of a visceral manipulation specialist. Oftentimes this will be a massage therapist or maybe a PT or a DC um, or a DO, but oftentimes it's a massage therapist who's trained in this. Um, you know, have people kind of get in there and move stuff around a bit. So visceral manipulation is wonderful. I also wonder too, if just in the process of moving the tissues around and getting them more mobile and supple, if we could support connective tissue health. So things like collagen, vitamin C, zinc, all of the things that you need to make collagen and lay down healthy connective tissue as opposed to scar tissue. Also fibroblasts tend to make more scar tissue when they're inflamed. So anti-inflammatories can go a long way. Um, I think that there is a lot of work that we can do with this as a root cause, but um, it does not include going back in time and preventing you from getting the scar tissue in the first place. That would obviously be the most effective, but just because we can't go back in time and do that, it doesn't mean that you should lose hope. Absolutely still work on, on your gut health and keep plucking away at the root causes that make the most sense for you. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.